Good morning and happy Friday to you. This is the Uranian Rodonius 5 Diamond Group Podcast. My name is Jared. My name is Isaac. And we are thankful that you're listening and watching today. Hope you are feeling good and hope that the smoke is not killing you. Although here in Vegas, we don't have it that bad. Uh, only for a couple days. Only for a couple it. days. <laughs> like this morning, I took a snapshot driving in of the sun. It is not so cloudy that it's like an orange haze, but it's cloudy enough that you can actually look at the sun. And that was kind of cool. Yeah, that so, is. Okay. Senses have been amazing. Very nice. Like, yeah, yeah. it's really cool. But uh, stay healthy. Drink lots of water. The heat is going away. Yeah. Finally. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Finally. And uh, yeah, I hope you and your family are staying safe. We are now into, I don't know what month 2000 feels like in this COVID thing, but there's hope on the horizon. <laughs> hope on the horizon. There's going to be uh, hopefully something that's going to happen here in the next few months. If you have certain political beliefs, it's supposed to happen before November 3rd, <laughs> a vaccine. <laughs> but um, because of so much uh, of this uh, pandemic has, uh, the, the, the pandemic itself has affected many people. Um, if you've had the, if you've had this disease, uh, you know that you more than likely survive because it's got a, like a 98 or 99 survival rate overall. But regarding that two and one percent, there are those who will get this disease and will ultimately have complications and quite possibly pass away. Um, and as a result, many people are not prepared for that potential change in life. So while it may not affect you directly, you may have an impact to it indirectly by uh, someone who has uh, been affected by it and quite possibly might pass away. Now we're not talking about that today, but we are talking about the issue of probate and how that comes up inside of everyone's life, whether you like it or not. And it's not just COVID, it's just any success or any event that can happen where you know, unfortunately, you know, any of us can, no, our lives aren't guaranteed, so. That's right. You know, anything can happen and we can pass away. It can happen, that's right. And so while uh, the subject on today's topic is going to be about probate, and we're going to dive a little deeper on it, because of uh, the increase in activity uh, as a result of the pandemic, we're seeing an increase in probate numbers. That's kind of like, it's not a direct line, but there is an increase in those numbers. Uh, which means, you know, from a real estate perspective, you, there are possibilities that you can get some interesting uh, uh, homes. Uh, but more importantly, how can people prepare so we can avoid probate and not have to deal with that complication in your family and in your life? So first of all, what is probate? <laughs> you're not. You're not. You're not old enough to remember uh, Roger Rabbit. Oh, yeah. Oh. It's probate, stupid. I'm not prostate. <laughs> <laughs> probate is uh, defined as officially. Sure. Should ahead. I give you the, the, give me the definition? The man. Wikipedia definition of this is probate is the judicial process whereby a will is proved in a court of law and accepted as a valid public document that is true, last testament of the deceased, or whereby the estate is settled. And so, probate court, uh, when someone does pass. Uh, probate court is where they make that decision, typically within the county of where uh, the uh, the uh, the passing happened, or wherever that person was, um, uh, where yeah, wherever that person passed. The probate court provides the final ruling on division and distribution of uh, all the assets on beneficiaries. Now, if someone has passed and there was not a will prepared ahead of time, well, then the court also distributes those uh, accordingly based on whatever debts are out there. So if grandpa has passed away and has debt that needs to be paid off uh, and owns a home, then they're going to offset the balance and clear out those, uh, those, those discrepancies, which means the house is going on the market and that's how you can find a house on probate. Now that said, probate is not a typical transaction. It is not. <laughs> not in real estate. So your typical transaction can literally happen in about 25 to 30, tra 30 days, depending on the lender. And those timelines are pretty solid, happen all the time. You can count on those like clockwork if you've got your, your paperwork in order. Probate requires several different additional layers that go to it. So 
Um, you've gone through it a couple times. You've had a win. You've had a, a miss. Couple, couple losses. Couple losses. <laughs> and it's been fun. Yeah. It's been a lot of fun because uh, because of the process that it takes to get it done. And and this is where you got to prepare your client, right? Because it's like you said, it's not a typical transaction where you're dealing with. Uh, even though there might be an executor of the estate who you might be dealing with, um, they really are still tied to whatever the court says. So yeah. uh, it's not like in your typical typical transaction where you're dealing with a seller and they make the final decision and then we move forward based on that. So right, uh, there's a couple, like I said, a couple extra layers. Right. So uh, we're going to ask more about your experience and, and our experience, really, that that uh, that we've gone through on this. But uh, w w just to outline those steps for most folks uh, to understand this, if you are for <coughs> purchasing a home and you're looking for, uh, you know, what would be the the right word people are looking for? A good deal. A good deal. <laughs> <laughs> you have the you have a greater possibility of getting that in a probate sale now, and that's mainly because most of the homes that will probably go on the market like that uh, aren't you know updated, mm -hmm. aren't ready to go. Maybe need improvements. And the fact that there's no one there to authorize you know repairs and so forth, um, they will take care of some of that, but they're not going to be doing a whole rehab for somebody <laughs> that Correct. goes in there. So that just means you can get in there and buy a house. Uh, for probably equal to or lower than your market value, especially in a current market like where there's a huge seller uh, bias Correct. on the market, right? And at the end of the day, uh, keep in mind throughout this conversation uh, that they're going to really want to maximize their, their profit. So uh, even though it might be listed significantly under market value, uh, that is probably just to drive up uh, or create a bidding war hmm. to drive up the price uh, to get closest to what market value is. And so you gotta kind of be, pre be prepared for that, especially in today's market where there's not a lot of inventory. Uh, some buyers are prepared to pay, you know, market value or even a little bit more. Right. So that's gonna be, uh, as a buyer, you're gonna wanna understand what each of those stages are uh, because uh, while some most of the time the process can go pretty mm -hmm. clean, uh, keep in mind, you're now at the mercy of the court and everyone else's approval stages and that can take extra long. Just depends on what it is. So let's start with the process of the transaction, what that looks like. Um, if, if uh, let's say Uncle Joe passes away and didn't leave a will, uh, what happens at that point? Well, the notice is given to uh, the, the county records and of course uh, the estate his estate or his assets uh, are then notified by the court and they turn around and start collecting as much information as possible. They, at that point, the court has to identify an administrator or someone who will take care of the interaction and make sure the collection of all the paperwork, make sure the court has everything that they have information-wise. In order to get to that point of identifying that, you have to schedule a court date and you have to get make sure all the paperwork is in order and you've got uh, probably an attorney that's involved with making sure that's that's all prepared mm -hmm. for that uh, so you're easily looking from the moment someone passes to about actually getting to a court date months several months to be able to get to that point uh, some agents might actually put the property on the market ahead of that somewhere in that window and as a buyer's agent or a buyer you need to be aware as to which court date are they talking about are they talking about identifying an administrator or are they identifying the actual authorization of the sale of the court in the uh, uh, in the process, uh, which can be confusing if you don't know the process, right? Um, and so, one of the prerequisites for buyers: patience. <laughs> <laughs> You're buying probate, patience, because um, it can be a, a drawn-out process. But if you've got the cash, or you're willing to be patient on that. Um, it, it, it could turn out to be a pretty good opportunity for you on it. On it. So uh, once they have the administrator and the uh, that has been defined, the court then goes through and review. Actually, the attorneys have to prepare all the paperwork for the court to be able to review it and authorize the sale once all the boxes are checked and the property is um, up for the market value, then they will accept the contract and now you've got to wait for an actual court date. And that's the fun part. <laughs> How many times have you gone? Um, exactly, I can't remember, but I know it's been a few times, and uh, it's interesting to see 
that process, at least for the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, being there and, and kind of seeing, uh, you know, being in an exact, you know, courtroom and then just seeing the both parties, you know, stand in front of a judge and then you seeing others uh, start bidding up. Mm -hmm. Uh, investors and uh, you know just any other but anybody else including a family yeah, so uh, set, set the stage like because we don't they don't allow cameras in there and we can't, right. can't sneak something <laughs> in there so like you like you're going into this courthouse this is all pre-covid by the way so. yeah so before covid you were you know they you would get a date you know typically early in the morning eight nine in the morning um you get there um you have a uh i guess a case number Right, right. And so you, you're. It's gonna be the name of the person who's your, passed, right? Your, the state your of docket number right. or docket the name. State of Uncle Joe. And uh, you just kind of wait till. So you got to be paying attention because uh, you might go through, you know, fifteen twenty of these. And uh, well, they have a call time, right? So let's start with nine o'clock. They walk you, you. You go into this courtroom setting, and the courtroom seats in the back are all packed yeah with all of these different cases because they'll go through several dozen cases on a day right? right and you as the buyer's agent with your with your client you're sitting there and you're just trying to listen for the name the name and then the thing is that they don't tell you where you are in the right. list they just you kind of kind of gotta wait yeah so you got to be paying attention and uh you know finally when they say the estate of, of joe then you're like okay well now you get up right. go on in front of the judge and you say you know we're here to uh purchase this property at you know x amount right and then uh if there is no objections then you're purchasing the home but however in my case in my first uh, couple cases uh i saw uh one go over thirty five thousand dollars over what we were asking for and another one was about fifteen thousand, if I if I'm recalling correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, the third one, we did win, uh, but we did go over ten thousand dollars over. What? So you got a counter bid, and your client countered back. <coughs> yeah. And they, that was it. Yeah, that was just it. one time round. Yeah. Well, so, it was a couple rounds, but uh, I think there was twenty five hundred dollar increment increments. Oh, right. Um, so we just went with. Uh, we went halfway up and then the second one was just like highest and best right this is where we're ready to walk away and yeah uh we ended up, <laughs> yeah actually we ended up going up the twenty five hundred dollars more because we were like at twenty five hundred dollars it's still a good deal but um we might have a chance of outbidding them mm -hmm. and if worst case then we're making them overpay <laughs> that's right back to the betting yes. <laughs> Welcome to Vegas. <laughs> So just, just to recap that, the process that, that Isaac just described is <clears throat> part of the requirements that probate uh, is um, that, that buyers need to be prepared for when purchasing a probate. Uh, so, hey, it's on the market. Oh my goodness, it's a fantastic price. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm buying this house at you know, 25, 30,000 under market value. And uh, your, uh, your contract was accepted. Great, by the, by the, you know, by the administrator. Uh, but when it goes to court, the process requires that uh, the property goes up for availability to any counter bids. Mm -hmm. uh, and so as a buyer, you need to be prepared that that is a, uh, a factor that you need to be prepared for. And if you are waiting two months just to get to that point, you could actually lose the property and walk away. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you'll get your money back of whatever you put into it. Uh, but though the, the judge uh, and the law here requires that uh, it, they open up the bidding to other buyers. So if someone is also paying attention to this property, sitting in the courtroom, is prepared to be able to pay cash on site, then yeah, you could lose it. And so uh, the, they will require each um, counter bid to be incrementally higher. Sometimes it's 2,500, other times it's 5,000. Sometimes it's 10,000, depending on the kind of property. Judge makes the call, and the judge basically sits there and... Just kind of, listens. Yeah. And so, give you an example. There was one that was, um, uh, it was somewhere in like in the four or 500,000 price range. It ended up going for like 750, and they were doing $10,000 increments. Mm. And it was a lengthy process because it started so low, and there was like, literally the, uh, the the original buyer that once I got the contract accepted, you know, went upstage, and then all of a sudden there's like 25 people that just go on the other side <laughs> on the on the on the, the plane side, side right? You know? uh, and so then there you have like a party of like maybe 10 different individuals mm -hmm. just bidding up, you know, you know, 450, 460, 470, 500, 510, you know, and and that was probably one of the first. Um, 
ideas that I got, I was just like, man, is that gonna happen with us? Mm. Uh, and they were representing a buyer for the first time on a probate as well, you know, both probate, he's never done probate, I've never done probate, uh, and it's just kind of one of those uh, intimidating moments of like, is that what we're going to go up against? Mm -hmm. um, you know, fortunately it wasn't as bad as that, uh, but like you said, yeah, it was a good deal, I think we were at like $125,000 um, purchase price that we had gotten the contract accepted. Uh, and then I think it ended up going for like 160, 165, somewhere, somewhere in that range. So, a couple years ago. <laughs> yeah, a couple years ago. So, for my client, it was more than he wanted to spend on this particular house due to the repairs that were needed on this house. Mm -hmm. uh, but there are investors that uh, not only have the money, but they have the resources to be able to spread out, the, you know, their 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 profit margin or minimize their profit margin because they do so many homes right. a year. It's about for yeah, them. yeah. So, the, so that said, that that's the uh, the court process uh, when it comes to uh, the actual sale. Now, uh, if you d were able to get um, up to the point of getting court approval and the court has uh, authorized your sale, well, at that point, you carry on. And the transaction actually starts at that point <laughs> for the buyer because then the buyer can then go through and um, you know, process the loan, make sure that the inspection is all done. Uh, actually, the, in many transactions, um, they want the buyers to be able to have all of their due diligence done. Uh, sometimes it's the inspection, sometimes it's the loan contingency. Um, some buyers will actually do that before they even get to court to understand whether or not they even want to pursue the property. Uh, and that is an out-of-pocket expense for buyers. Uh, as a buyer's agent, in my transaction we just closed last week, we had, uh, I had negotiated with the uh, listing office that buyer's due diligence won't start until we have formal court approval. Uh, and that was simply to help the, the client, the buyers understand uh, save basically save money out of pocket in case they were outbid for any reason uh, they didn't have to lose anything on that but now the process is a little different with covid that's right so that's right in, in a way it's a little bit easier it actually is yeah. <laughs> it's been so uh, at, at this point um ac access to the court is not like it was before obviously there, there are many restrictions to get in there um you can out, submit a counter bid, but those bids now have to be done in writing to the court 72 hours before the actual court date. Uh, so the same homework ap applies, the only difference is now if a counter bid is submitted, it has to be submitted within that window of time. <clears throat> and then <clears throat> if, it, if a counter bid has been received, which was in our case, the next day it's notified to all parties, including our clients, and that means we have to schedule an appointment with the judge. Uh, and they will provide access to the uh, Zoom meeting or whatever tools they use so that we can have that same experience, but now virtually online. And uh, provide links to whoever else is going to be counterbidding, which, you know, just puts it in a virtual environment. It makes it a lot easier for us to be able to <laughs> not have to be prepared, drive downtown, be all dressed up, sit there and wait for an hour and a half, just be able to get called and then have an answer in two minutes. So. Uh, it, it certainly makes it easier on that front. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but that said, you also have a higher probability of someone putting a counter bid, and in our case, they put the counter bid, but then withdrew the bid, and then freaked our clients out and said, oh, okay, well, we don't have any counter bids at that point. You're approved. Proceed. <laughs> <laughs> so it's that whole preparation and patience is super, super important in a probate process as a buyer, as well as a buyer's agent. Uh, you also need to prepare your client as uh, you just need to be prepared for all of those potentials and not get intimidated or scared by that process. So uh, you can actually work out pretty well on it. It's pretty cool. So with your particular case, um, I would estimate that they probably got that property ten to twenty thousand dollars under value. Uh, more like twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Yeah. If they were to go and do some like full rehabs all the way through. Right. Yeah. So. If they were to do that full, let's say they were to spend twenty five thousand dollars in a in a full rehab, which would be quite a lot, mm -hmm. um, well, then they're at least breaking even. Well, <clears throat> we came in, uh, we we put our offer in, and we got uh, appraisal over contract value awesome. already 
in its current condition. So they already have equity. They already walked in with just you know some equity on the property. Any improvements that they do is just going to add value to the property, mm -hmm. which is great. It's a fantastic place to be for your clients, right? Um, but the cool thing is, they're going to live in it. They want it. Right. It's their family. So it's a, yeah. So it makes it even so, better for them. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a win, win, win for everybody, and that's the that's the coolest part about this whole thing. Is yeah. like, you know, it's one thing working for investors, working on ratios and ROIs and so mm -hmm. forth. And it's a whole different ball game when someone sees the vision and can have that same opportunity and uh and land that as a part of their their first home you know it's like yeah all right that's cool that's cool fun stuff man um so that said you know that that process is uh is what is available to us uh as residents in southern nevada clark county um it, it, and it, that same process applies pretty much anywhere in the United States. Uh, I, I would even say the, the most of the Western world that has some sort of uh, democratic society in there. Because uh, the dispersion of, of assets ends up being something that, that, that we can benefit from. Um, <clears throat> so when it comes to preparing so that we can avoid those things, this is one of the main reasons why we did this particular episode is because well, if you are in, uh, a family member who had lost Uncle Joe, and Uncle Joe, you know, really wanted to pass on this stuff, maybe uh, some sort of inheritance or an investment to, you know, a family member, didn't have any kids, so he wants to pass it on to somebody, but you don't have anything in writing to verify that. I have an example to share. Uh, I have a past client we've done several transactions with, uh, 13 children all of them born here in the states and their parents got covid one in february and one in march each one passed away the following month neither of them had any as any any sort of description in the will and so what happens now you know one person's living in the one of the children are living in the house and they're arguing the fight that's theirs and the others are like well why don't we just you know sell everything and split the money evenly and they're like fighting over this. Now you create conflict mm -hmm. and there's challenges and problems within the family side. How can we avoid those things? Preparing for end of life issues would be one of the smartest ways to do that. Um, setting up a trust or setting up wills uh, is not a bit hard thing to do. It's just a matter of having that conversation and thinking ahead and getting that done. And so uh, we strongly encourage anybody who might have family members who are of uh, high risk capacity um, because of the way the pandemic is going there's a higher probability it's not a comfortable conversation but how much more uncomfortable would it be if something did happen and you have to now dispute and create you know have that have that challenge within your family members you can avoid all that by simply preparing ahead with with your with your family members help them appreciate that uh, having a will doesn't mean you're gonna die it just means you know now, now know what to expect when something does happen and you can now impose your will after you've passed and one thing um that has always been suggested to me um and i've actually been assigned an executor of of a trust uh outside of family so it's picking somebody that is not family that's right that can be unbiased that can point. that can <laughs> go in there and won't almost say won't care who they're gonna get mad You're this neutral. is this is uh what you know they left this is what it says this is what's going to happen um, because a lot of times with the emotions you know the grief if uh, the executor of that is a family member well then it, it could judge their their uh, their cl or they cloud their judgment right and uh, you know they can create that conflict create that you know issue yeah so having somebody who is outside of the family who you trust, uh, you know, assigning them as your, the executor of your, your will, your estate, um, can also prevent anything happening. And you don't even have to notify family. You can create the will, cre you know, notify your whoever is going to execute it, and then, you know, give them a copy. Give them a copy of it, yep. Leave it as it is. And when that happens, they can jump in and take care of it. All right, right. And so those preparations ahead of time can help make sure that your family legacy, your um, 
relationship with your family is is your legacy is is passed on uh, for for your children, for your family, or whoever whoever it is that you choose. So excellent, excellent point. Um, when it comes to setting up those trusts and estates, you want to get them done with uh, an attorney or someone who is licensed to be able to uh, license and experience in that in that arena. Um, it is possible that you can download that paperwork and do it yourself if you go to a notary, uh, but it's because of the legal requirements of each of those uh, documents, you want to make sure that they're done right. You know, So it's, it's worth the money to be able to get it out there. Especially if you have a lot of assets, if you have rental properties, no. if you have anything of high value or uh, family mm -hmm. heirlooms that you want to make sure that they're passed on to the right uh, person, um, I think it's, a, you know, the, the fees are a little bit, I would say, on the high side, but it's such a small cost to pay uh, for ensuring that it goes to the right person. It goes, you know, the, the, it, your will or your, your assets get distributed properly. Yeah, that's really kind of what a will is. It's, you know, mm -hmm. my will or that person's will or desire to have this be done. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so make sure that you have a uh, neutral person as the executor of the state. That's the key takeaway there. Yeah, I think so. And, um, you know, just look at uh, what you own. Look at what, what's valuable. I mean, uh, put it in writing. <laughs> yeah. You know, definitely just put something together. Something is better than nothing because at least it could be uh, taken to court and then figured out there if... if you're not willing to do a will, right. but at least there's something, some type of right. And oh, and then one other thing that I want to touch on: uh, working at a bank, uh, it was so tough to see families, you know, distraught, uh, you know, grieving, and then coming and saying, you know, my dad, my grandpa, my uncle has an account here. Uh, you know, can we get his money, or how do we, you know, mm. uh, get this? And it's just so hard because we are bank employees. We have, you know, the Bank Secrecy Act, which we are not allowed to disclose who's our client, who isn't. So we could look up and we could pull up, you know, Uncle Joe on there. And if there's nobody as a beneficiary or anybody as an added uh, co-signer on the account, I can, uh, you know, deny or... Uh, you can't give him any, give any information. information. So, right. you know, does he have an account here? I can't tell you that. Right. You know, and and I understand they're they're grieving, they're they're you know emotional, and they get mad and they get frustrated. But you know, I'm like I, I got to do my job, and I can't do anything. And this is these are the steps. So, um, simple things like that. At least where if you have a savings, go put beneficiary on there. Mm -hmm. And there's ways to, to set it up where you could do 50-50 or you could say, you know, uh, if I pass away, you know, it goes to my spouse. If my spouse passes away, it goes to the following person and, mm -hmm. and so forth. Um, so that way you can ensure at least, you know, your, your liquid assets to right. be dispersed immediately. Because as soon as they bring in the death certificate, uh, we can release that money right but at least with uh that knowledge and you being a beneficiary yes we can uh give out some information right so that's an excellent point because uh while having the will or a trust on on one hand can tell uh instruct the court or whoever where things are going unless it's been authorized on the other side <laughs> you can't do anything with it right correct and so identifying who those are on bank accounts on uh, insurance policies on any sort of 401ks, 401ks. investments right. anything where so there's some liquidity um, you're gonna get the money a lot quicker because that certificates usually issued uh, a lot quicker than than going through a court process so if you can get that out of the way super quick um, at least you have maybe some uh, funeral expenses to take care of right and if there's savings in there and maybe that's what that was left for but then you have no access to it now you're gonna, you know, you guys are gonna have to come out of pocket, or worse, you know, maybe you know, take out a loan or create a GoFund account to uh, take care of those those, those payments, costs. those costs. Yeah. In the meantime, while you get that situated, so yeah. just simple things like that are a huge plus. Huge plus, and just pre being prepared. Mm -hmm. uh, so that said, full disclosure. Uh, we are not experts in this arena. We have no. We are not offering legal advice. This is our opinion. We are 
uh, sharing our experience and want to help you as far as being prepared for the potential of. And if it doesn't, great, we, we carry on. Uh, but when it comes to wills, when it comes to uh, trusts for that matter, they have varying prices based on who you go to go with on an attorney. Not any attorney, while any attorney is licensed to do it, you want to go with an industry expert, right? Uh, somebody can sell their house as a FISBO, but you want a realtor to be able to help you get the highest and cleanest transaction possible, right? So go to a, an attorney who specializes in estate planning and uh, talk to them specifically. We do have references available if you need more information on those. Uh, but uh, at the end of the day, having a trust is, is great if you have lots of assets and maybe even layers of, uh, of, of uh, items that need to be uh, protected and or uh, carried on within a trust. A will is great if you've got just simple items on the list and they need to be uh, distributed accordingly. Either way, proper life planning is, is always good measure. Yeah, and um, yeah, like Jared said, it's not legal advice, but it is our past experience, experiences that we've had, experiences that we've had not just personally, but with other family and friends. Uh, and you know, we do have, uh, we do know attorneys here in town that do specialize in that. Uh, so please, you know, if you don't know anybody or you want somebody who is trustworthy, uh, please reach out to us, and we'd be more than happy to help. And at the end of the day, it's not about. Um, worrying about or getting you to worry and think about the day that you die it's to prepare yourself and your family for that day so uh the stress and the pain is Minimized. as minimal as right. possible because it's going to be a hard day for everyone when that day comes and it's just it can become worse when there's conflict when there's uh, confusion or where there's not when they don't they don't know where all your assets are or you had any other assets especially if you have stuff spread out in multiple accounts in yeah. multiple states yeah all right, bud. Anything else? That's it. All right. That's all I got. Well, that does it for this episode of the Arena Rodonia's Five Diamond Group Podcast. We want to thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, ding the like button and feel free to subscribe to this channel or any of our social outlets that you can catch us on. Um, That's it. I mean... Yeah. We appreciate we appreciate you guys watching and, and listening in every week. And uh, See, again, that's what it would feel like if someone had didn't have a will. It was just like a silence of <laughs> awkward silence. <laughs> <laughs> just don't know. But uh, please let us know if uh, you guys are enjoying this. If you're not. Uh, as well just you know drop a topic in the comments and yeah. see what, uh, what the subject is we'll jump on that and see what explore that uh, conversation and if you guys ever want to be part of this uh, podcast show please reach out to us as well we'd love to have you guys as a guest uh, with that said this that is Isaac it. I'm Jared have a good one have a good one